I deserve to feel safe in my community. For nearly four years, Shannon Phillips has been wondering who is watching her. It was scary. It's scary to have yourself surreptitiously photographed. A member of the Alberta Legislature, Minister of the Environment in Alberta's former NDP government. Targeted by some of the very people sworn to protect her. Members of the Lethbridge Police Service. These guys still don't understand that there's a line between your personal feelings and how you do your job as a law enforcement uh, uh, official. Philip's story goes back to 2017 when the tranquility of the castle region was shattered by a turbulent local disagreement. At issue, 1,000 square kilometers of mountains and foothills in the castle provincial park. Phillips was working on plans to phase out the use of off-highway motorized vehicles on more than 100 kilometers of trails. Many off-roaders didn't like it, and they weren't shy about letting her know. People, you know, would call her or cow or, you know, cow or cow Lisa Lambert, Phillips' constituency assistant, was on the front lines of the insults aimed at her boss. A daily email, phone call, visitors, um, social media, just a, a pretty daily dose of uh, name calling and, um, and just kind of generalized yelly hate. The vile, often misogynistic rhetoric turned threatening enough. Phillips needed close protection services from the province at one point, but there were even more unsettling incidents to come. Stella's Diner is known for its home-cooked breakfast, a perfect place for Shannon Phillips to meet with friends, including environmentalist Harvey Locke and his wife, Marie-Ève Marchand. I sit down and uh, right behind me was a booth. And uh, at the time, I believe there were two uniformed officers and um, I smile at them, I sit down, you know, I acknowledge their presence, they acknowledge mine. Little did Phillips know a Lethbridge police sergeant was snapping photos of the group. Soon an on-duty constable arrived and took more pictures. It was Lisa Lambert who first saw those photos later that day in an anonymous social media post. When I contacted her and to let her know about it, she said, well, the, the only person that could have taken that was a was an officer in in uniform like and when we realized that it was a uniformed officer who had taken this and then would have had to share it they were behind this like that just was just unbelievable Lambert easily traced the anonymous post to one of the police officers I was just so sickened by a thought that someone was out there taking photographs of her using the power of the state against a minister of the crown. <laughs> like just. But a disciplinary investigation that Phillips was not even made aware of revealed police went even further. The constable followed Locke and Marchand in his police cruiser for five blocks, running a police check on their license plate before losing their car at a red light. Both officers were demoted. Their misconduct found to be rooted in personal and political feelings against Phillips. Having been cut out of that investigation left Phillips wondering if there could be more. Then she started hearing the whispers. So in August, Phillips filed a freedom of information request on herself and the Lethbridge Police Service. The answer would come back in 9,308 pages. Curiously, almost all of them were redacted, most completely blank even though they pertain to Philip's own files. But there are startling new revelations in what little was released. In 2018, months after the photo incident in the diner, Shannon Phillips was still very much on the mind of some people in the Lethbridge Police Service. Philip's name was often searched on the police database. Some of the searches were legitimate and they said so, like that time her car was stolen. 
But over the course of 2018, Phillips' name was searched eight times by five police officers, one now retired, as well as one civilian employee. And though files with highly personal information were accessed, there was no investigative purpose recorded for any of the searches. All of that is there. But if it was a fishing expedition for reasons of snooping or uh, uh, wanting to engage in gossip, there is no reason associated uh, uh, with the search in those records. Emily Laidlaw is a cybersecurity legal expert and associate professor at the University of Calgary. She says if the searches are unauthorized, that could violate both privacy legislation and possibly the criminal code. So this is no different really than hacking. Um, it's just that they, they don't need to break into a system to gain access to the data. They actually have it available to them and they're supposed to exercise you know, self-restraint. Had Phillips not requested her own records, the matter may well have stayed hidden forever. But now Alberta's serious incident response team is investigating all the searches. Part of it, I think, is... Over. Phillips' lawyer, Michael Bates, is counting on Acer to dig deep. If they were for a personal reason, a non-law enforcement reason, what happened with the information? Where was it spread? How did it get used? Uh, those are really key important pieces to try and get to the bottom of. The documents reveal yet another mystery. This one happened before Phillips was photographed or her name searched. In 2016, an unknown person went to the Lethbridge police complaining they'd been drugged at a local bar six days prior. The complaint alleges the intended victim was none other than Shannon Phillips. That came as a shock to Phillips. So this was March of 2016 that this evidently happened. I'm listed as a witness in the police uh, uh, report and uh, I find out about it on December 8th, 2020. The question that comes up in my mind is what decisions were made as to why that would not be information that would be shared with a person who is, is named as an intended target. The documents suggest the incident was never investigated. The Lethbridge Police Service declined an interview and refused to answer any questions or provide any information. Only after Alberta's serious incident response team announced its investigation into the database searches did the police service respond to say it would be inappropriate to comment on that before the investigation was complete. Shannon Phillips knows there could be more unsettling news to come from investigations and in hearings, but she says it's necessary for her hometown police force to regain its position of trust. If you cannot find it in you to prosecute those duties in a way that leaves aside your uh, feelings uh, and your little political tantrums, if you cannot do that, you do not deserve the gun and the badge and the uniform. Carolyn Dunn, CBC News, Lethbridge, Alberta.